When you heard about the promises of generative AI coding, I bet you didn't imagine all the time you will spend actually debugging and figuring out how to make the code works. And I bet debugging just been a very painful process of this era of AI coding. And in this video, I wanna show you a way to make debugging a lot easier when you're using generative AI with an IDE like Cursor or Windsurf or any of the sorts. You can name it, Aid, Tray, VS Code, GitHub Copilot, or any of the sorts. So I spent the weekend working on a really cool tool called Debug Prompt. And this is what I'm going to show you right now. So this tool is essentially all the debugging prompt that I use when I, I'm trying to debug my own code. And I've collected some of my favorite, you know, battle-tested debugging prompt that I'm using for debugging different scenario when I want to do error diagnosis, data flow tracing, approach comparison, slow code analysis, assumption testing, refactoring, performance tuning, prompt iteration, test generation, environment debugging, security analysis, edge case handling, logic breakdown, dependency debugging, or even code optimization. So in this tool, you have access to all of my prompts. Any prompt that I'm going to share on my videos, you know, the previous one, the future one, you'll see those prompts over here. And let's say if you're working with TypeScript and you want to debug something, you can just come over here and just type TypeScript. And it's going to filter the result and show you some of the prompt that you can use for, let's say, TypeScript. And one of the prompts that I've been using quite a lot is this one right here that allowed me to analyze TypeScript prop type mismatch. So, you know, like when you're working with TypeScript and you're building your project, you sometimes end up with a lot of debugging error before you can deploy. And that can be very time consuming. So I've created different prompts that I can use to add to my code when I'm debugging with TypeScript and make it a lot easier for me to debug TypeScript. And all I have to do is come over here, click here, and then I can head over to my code and paste exactly what I just copied in the input right here to do that. And this is how it works. So in this video, I'm going to show you an example of how I use it personally when I'm dealing with some issues with my own prompt. So I've been working on this plugin right here that will allow me to convert a page to Markdown or convert a section to Markdown. And this is something that I like to use when I'm, for example, copying a code from, from ChatGPT or any other sources like a website and pasting it into my IDE. And sometimes you'll notice that you have like some weird character appearing. Your LLM is actually very good at reading Markdown. So this is why converting a site to Markdown can be super helpful to allow him to actually understand the context better. So this tool is just meant for context, and this is why I'm building it, to just make my workflow more efficient. So one issue that I've been having building this tool is that when I added the selection workflow, and added this enable selection copy, it wasn't working as expected. Actually, it's still not working as expected. The selection here was working, and then now when I click here, enabling it doesn't work, and then it comes back again here when, when I actually disable it. So I have a couple of issues here. For one, click is not being persisted into memory. And two, the feature that was actually allowing me to display a pop-up here to copy this text has stopped working. So I had various attempts trying to fix this and it's still not working as expected. As I scroll up over here, I've tried various, various different approaches. What are we going to try here? We're going to try to use debug prompt. And so I can show you how I use debug prompt when I'm trying to debug an issue like this one. So right here, I was saying both the persistence and the functionality of displaying the button when text is selected are not working. So let's scroll a little bit up. I wanna see if I can go back in history to a state that will make sense to start debugging this. Okay, so I think this is around here when it stopped working. So if I go back to it in history, let's do that. And we're gonna have to reload the Chrome plugin. So I remove it and we add it like that, just like this. Okay, you can reload it too, but I like to do that just to make sure that everything is back to normal. Then I'll add it here, and then now we're gonna test it. So let's say I wanted to select this. I believe I might have to reload the page. Uh, if Yeah, it's here, it's working. So I can select the text, and I can see copy section as markdown appearing already. When I click it, there's a toast that appears on the bottom right corner, and it's also working for copying the page. So if I paste it here, you can see, I can see my, my selection. 
and I can also keep copy a page as markdown and this is working as expected. Now the problem right now is that when I added this feature, enable section copy, it's not persisting. So here you say, please reload the page for change to apply. The, the problem, so right now it's not working. It's, so, so it did work here, but if, but if I click here, it looks like it's still selected. So it's not clear if it's working or not. Right now it's not working. But if I reload the page, let's see, it looks like it has persisted the previous state, not the new, the new state. So I'm going to head over here and in my description here, I had at the bottom right of the page, let's uh, have a floating reload button. So we're going to remove all of that because we don't need this. Uh, persist the section of enable selection copy toggle. So let's remove that. And then we're going to try something new using debug prompt. So the type of error that I'm having is right now I have a couple of things I want to do. I want to diagnose the error, but I don't have an error yet, right? There's a guide here, by the way, if you want to figure out what's the best model to use depending on your use case and what reasoning requirement different debugging category help you with. Right? So right now, I think for what we're trying to do here, we want to analyze the pseudocode and understand what's working and what's broken because we had an expectation and it's not working as we expected, right? So I'm going to state the expectation right now and I'm going to say, I select, uh, let's call it, this is called enable selection copy, enable selection copy. I was expecting the state to be persistent, okay? Uh, I would say probably uh, toggle. This way it will account for when I select it to enable it or select it to disable it, to be persistent. And I'll say, but it isn't. And then the other issue that we're having is that also the logic persisting the state dependent on the I would say maybe the logic of persisting. Then I can say displaying the copy selection as markdown button stop working when I select it and reload the page. Okay, so so. Essentially, what I think we have right now is that if we select it, one one of the steps is working correctly. So right now, it's disabling it, right? But the problem, the true problem that we have is that reloading the page doesn't persist the the unselection, and also the unselection of the checkbox is not persisted. So I will say here, um, when I select the option, the button stop appearing as it should. But when I click on the pop-up button, the date of enable selection copy appear enabled. There's no way for me to re-enable it because it's already enabled. But, okay. So I think that's going to help, but now we're going to head over to debug prompt and convert this pseudo code into working code. Okay, let's see that. Convert this pseudo code into working code, analyze each step, are their logical gap, are edge cases handled, are the data structure optimal, are there redundant operation? So we could use this one, or we can use one that actually compare them. So analyze the pseudo code for logical flaws. Uh, let's do this one. Missing step, incorrect assumption, edge case is not handled, potential optimization. Okay, so let's do this one and we can place it right here. This is where I kind of prefer WinServe because WinServe allow me to toggle between chat and composer without losing the context of the chat. So that's something that is a bit annoying with cursor over here. So I'm going to switch to WinSurf. All right, so we've switched to WinSurf now. I'm going to paste what we just had earlier right here. And as you can see in WinSurf, I have the, the chat and I can write here. So I'm gonna submit this in the chat because I don't want it to do anything. It doesn't have context about all the discussion that we had just had, but I believe that because I'm mentioning enable selection copy, it's just, it's just going to assume what's happening right now based on the context that I've, I've given. Okay, so he's analyzing the issue. 
I'm reusing Claude 3.5 Sonnet right here. Let's just head back to debug prompt right here. What was the guide? You see, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is recommended for error, error diagnosis. And for pseudocode analysis, you recommend Claude 3.5 HiQ, GPT-4 Mini. So those are just recommendations. I mean, you can still use this one there. I just want to make clear that there's a reason why it's recommending some of those based on the capability of those models, but feel free to use either one. In first, I only have access to Sonnet. Okay, so it says after analyzing the code, I can identify several issues with the current implementation of the enable section toggle. So right here is doing what we wanted it to do. So you see missing step, incorrect assumption, edge cases not handled and potential optimization. So it's broken down all of those things for me. What are we getting? So first let's update pop-up. JS, that's always the first suggestion right here. Uh, then you say, no, let's upgrade contents. We also need to update the manifest, okay? And let's see what was the conclusion here. These improvements ensure that the toggle state persists across browser session. The UI correctly reflect the actual states, all tabs maintain consistent behavior. The feature work reliably with proper management. Okay, so it says that, but oftentimes what will happen is uh, you'll get something like that from your IDE, but it's not actually implementing the solution and we might have to try something again. Again, I want to highlight something here. So when you're doing something in the chat, you can apply it right here, but the benefit of doing it in write is that as you generate the things in write, it actually applies it, but you can revert it by just clicking the button uh, to reject it. So that, that this is one of the advantage of the chat. So sometimes I will generate something like this and actually switch to, to write and ask it to pretty much re-implement that using write uh, instead. Okay, so so I've applied some of those changes. Let's see let's see what happened now. Is our Chrome plugin working? So let's remove that. Let, we're gonna reload the plugin again and head over to our, the test where we wanna test it. So this is it right here. Okay, so it's enabled right here. So you see, so it's working. Copy selection is working. And I'm going to disable it. Okay. Is it persisted? Looks like it's persisted. And now it's disabled. Now, here's the moment of truth. We're going to try to re enable it and see if it works. It's working. Okay, perfect. So it's working a lot better. And now we're going to refresh the page and see if, if the state is being persisted. Let's see. State is being persisted. And I can re enable it. Let's see. Persisted. Refresh the page again and now it should be enabled. Perfect. So this is working exactly as we want. So this is the power of using really smart debugging prompt. Uh, again, if we head back to this one right here, this is an issue I've been dealing with for a while. So I kept going into this loop of trying to fix it. You see, I had like so many different attempts, uh, nonstop, just trying to fix it and it wasn't working. And then I head over to one of my magic prompt uh, that you all have access to now. And I just copied this one and it helped the AI think better about what it's trying to solve. And we were able to solve this issue. And now this plugin is working exactly as it should. And I will be able to publish it and make it available for everyone else to use on the Chrome store. All right, so this is what I wanted to share with you. So you have access to this tool at debugprompt.com. There's a search, there's a, there's a way for you to filter by category. You can contribute by clicking submit prompt if you have your own prompt because this is an open source project. You have 100% access to the entire code. All you have to do is click here and follow the instruction on this page where I break down exactly how you can add your own contribution. So if you have like a prompt that's been really like helpful to you, all you have to do is come over here, head over to data and you can contribute by clicking on prompts and you're going to have the list of all the prompts that you saw on the website and you can just add your prompt by editing this file and adding a new entry at the bottom. And if you are a content creator, you can head over to video and add your own video contents. And if you have, for example, uh, you would like to submit an ad, then you can just head over here and add one of your ads that will be displayed on the website. I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you for watching and make sure to hit subscribe. And don't forget to watch one of those videos right here. <laughs> Not right here, but one of those videos because that can be super uh, helpful to help you build more efficiently with AI. Thanks for watching.